Howdy, it's Jeff Wilson. I'm better known as a housing dude. Can you hear me? Thumbs up. I'm up. Yes, we can hear you. Outstanding. My apologies. So we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about the on-campus housing experience, but really what I'm doing is going to set the, the information that you need to know to, for the next kind of month or so for your students. We actually try to get them in an assignment, but I'm going to spend some time with you this summer as part of your new student conference when we do the virtual tours on how that's actually going to work. All right, so again, most of this presentation is going to be your questions. I do have some questions towards the end because I'm getting lots and lots of questions from you folks. I hope to do a little bit preemptive, but it kind of give you an idea of where we are. Uh, save your questions towards the end and we'll be happy to address them. All right, so Texas A&M University, as you can see, is a big housing operation, almost 12,000 students. And we will spend some time this summer talking about this 5,400 acres that we call Texas a and University, our home for our students for most of the academic year. So get lots of questions on this. In fact, we're getting questions on this now as our students are, have moved out or a bunch of our students have moved out due, due to uh, COVID-19. Some folks are confused as to whether or not they're on campus or not on campus. And it's really, really easy. If the website or the email address does not end in .edu, then it is not on-campus housing. It is a, if it's something other than that, it's one of the many, many off-campus properties we have that surround the Bryan College Station area. So hopefully there's no confusion there. Everybody on this web chat should be an on-campus resident for this fall. So if you have not applied for housing, housing is still open. Um, this is one of the few times we've done it this late in the year, but housing is still an option. You can go to our website, go to oncampusaggies.tamu.edu. The student would log in with their net ID, and then the student will start some processing. If the student is under the age of 18 when they start this, the parents will automatically get dragged in as part of the parent proxy process. Parents, please do not do this for the students. The system is set up to recognize that when the same email address is being done by both parent and child, it's not going to let you through the system. So if we let the system work, student goes in, starts a process, we'll send you some information. The parents will go in and basically approve the contract and then send an information back to the student and the student completes the process. So once the student has applied and they pay that non-refundable application fee, now we have to wait and see what's going on. But you have until May 1st to cancel. And what we have done this year because of COVID-19 and all the uncertainties are out there, We've extended that until June 1st, but that means you must decline your admissions to Texas A&M during that time period. If you elect to stay at A&M, but move off campus after May 1st, then the penalties do apply. So I wanna talk about how the assignment process works and kind of where we are. But phase one opened when the housing application uh, started this year and we're tied to admissions. So the first group of students that got admitted this year was September 19th and we opened the housing application then. Phase two was opened up shortly there afterwards and it was designed to get students interest on where do you want to live or how do you want to live. So these were questions dealing primarily with living learning programs and types of residence halls that you're associated or that you want to live in. Phase three was the roommate selection process and it was open for about a month. So all the students that applied for housing before the 1st of March got some notification that says, hey, the phase three process is open. Please go in and start looking for roommates. Students that applied after March 1st or on or before or on or after March 1st uh, was told up front, you may be able to participate in the roommate matching process, but we did not send you specific information. And the reason why is because the roommate process was filling up as it was doing it. And it became very, very hard to man manage the students that were applying late in the system. Right now, phase two and three are closed. You can't change your living learning programs and you can't change, uh, can't opt in or opt out in the roommate situation. Right now, we're in the process of doing phase four. And you all are the first to hear this, but we're actually sending out the assignment notifications starting tomorrow afternoon. Every single student that applied for on-campus housing will get this assignment notification tomorrow or starting tomorrow. There's gonna to be one exception and that's gonna be living learning programs. 
and it's not that they're not starting on the 10th, it's because they're done in buckets, it may take us a little bit longer to get them through. And I'll talk about that here in just a second. So this is the 5,400 acres we call AM. m We actually have four properties that we manage. We're gonna spend a little bit of time during your new student conference talking about the three locations but really what I want to do is kind of draw your attention to this because as your students are starting to pick their space, we tell folks is it's best to start looking on a side of campus that interests you or a type of property that interests you. And these are where these locations are, where our properties are located. And I'm going to show you some places on our website on how to find that. But again, this is where our students live uh, for, for our freshman class. All of our residence halls have these amenities, but each, each residence hall has specific amenities that are unique to them. So on the website, you'll actually be able to click on those amenities, and when you click on the hall, you'll be able to see what the, the amenities are that are associated with those halls. And again, when you come to your new student conference, we'll spend a little bit more time about this, uh, but we get lots of questions about what to bring, what not to bring. Most of that information really can be found here, but I get lots of questions about, do, do you all clean the bathrooms, and how does that process work? So Texas A&M does clean all of our bathrooms in our residence halls. We do not clean the bathrooms in the apartments. We also do not clean the students' bedrooms in any of our locations. It's primarily a bathroom situation. And we get lots of questions about kitchens. And again, we'll spend some time at your new student conference kind of pointing out where those are and how those community kitchens work. We have 18 living learning programs when you count the core cadets that are living on campus. So about 5,000 students are in some form of clustered housing. When your student went through the application process, they, they had an opportunity in phase two that said, yes, I'm interested in living learning programs. Then they were given some information. And then when phase three opened up, then they could select their top three living learning programs. If they select to be part of a living learning program and they're associated, where they're living is associated with those particular facilities. They did not have to request a living learning program. They could have said no in phase three and moved on. We're giving you an idea, but we do have lots of living learning programs for our students to live. And it really depends on what they want to do or what their interests are is what these living learning programs kind of cater towards. So let's talk about how the time slots are going to work. And we actually have four different groups of students, but all of them are going to get something starting Friday, Friday afternoon around noon is when we're trying to push these notifications out. So it depends on what your student is. But if your student is not part of a living learning program, so they're going to be part of the other 5,000 plus students that decide to be to live wherever they want, uh, then what's going to happen is they'll get this notification tomorrow that says, here's how your assignment works. They're going to be given an assignment time slot. So that's a date and time for them to go pick their room and those rooms will be sometime in the future. The time slots will start on April 14th and we're gonna finish when we're done. Get lots of questions about how does the time slot sequencing work? The easiest way to remember this, regardless of how, what situation you're in, is think of this like airline seating. Um, and you are the, you're given a time to go to the queue to go log in to pick your seat. Once you log in to pick your seat, you can pick any seat that's available to you at that time. And this becomes a good thing or a bad thing, depending on what, what perspective you're looking at. And I will use it from a parent of three kids in college. My students may have requested the lowest cost halls when they were doing their housing application because I was with them when they were doing that conversation. But when they got their time slot, they saw something else that might have been more expensive. The student can pick whatever they want. There is nothing in there that's keeping them from picking those spaces. So that's why I tell folks is have a very distinct conversation with your student when they pick that space. But if the space they were looking for is not available, and it'll be probably become an issue about the, uh, about the fifth or sixth time slot, we call this the hullabaloo effect, when hullabaloo hall is full, when students start moving themselves around, they can do that all summer long. So example is I wanted hullabaloo. I really wanted a very specific room in hullabaloo. It wasn't available today when I did my assignment. I would pick another location and then I can come back again like airline seating all summer long and look for vacancies. Because the moment a student picks themselves up and moves themselves somewhere else or cancels their housing, it automatically opens up that seat for anybody else that's in the queue looking. But only students with time slots can pick spaces. So that's why we kind of roll out the time slots in kind of a small numbers and then grow to the whole group by the time we get all 8600 students in the system. Okay, the living learning program 
ones are going to be done a little bit differently. You notice we're going to start on April 10th, but we're probably going to migrate them through the weekend and then to, through Monday. Because we have 18 living learning programs, we're going to be rolling them out living learning program specific. So each student that's assigned to a specific living learning program will get an email that's catered to them. As a reminder, students that are associated with a living learning program can only live where that living learning program is assigned to you. And the example I have here is an honors. University honors is in Lecter and McFadden. If you are part of the university honors program, you will be assigned to one of those two spaces. If you are part of the engineering honors program called ECOS, then you will be assigned to Mosier Hall. Again, we have 18 living learning programs and they all have associated space. Most of them do not have a completely complete hall. They may have a space on the floor or part of the floor or maybe multiple floors in a building, but they'll be assigned to that designated space. If they have a linked roommate, which means when they went through phase three and selected their roommate, the roommate that they linked with is a person in the same living learning program. Our goal is to assign both of them together because they are linked bookies. So if a student decides at some point down the road that they want to change their living learning program or decide not to be in a living learning program, and this is a common issue with my roommates in the program or is not in the program and I want to move with them, then what's going to happen is we would contact our academic partners, we'd remove you from that living learning program, and then you will go into the next available time slot to pick a space. That next available time slot won't be tomorrow. That next available time slot will be based on the number of folks in the time slots when there's a vacancy down the road. And then we have a smaller group of students we call them our, our special accommodations. So these are students that are primarily uh, being worked with our disability resources office. So they have a specific need or requirement that must be met. So what's going to happen is they will get an email on the 10th as well, but they will be assigned. When we do the assignment, it's working very closely with disability resources on that specific accommodation. So if the accommodation requires, say, a private bedroom and a private bath, we will find a space that meets the private bedroom, private bath accommodation, and they'll look at the student, what they requested when they applied, so that we can assign them a space that's within their price point for those particular facilities. A student that's, uh, part, that's been assigned as part of this group will be given a time slot. And the issue is if they move themselves around, and they can, if they move themselves to a space that does not meet their accommodation request, then that basically voids the accommodation request that they have. Their space is no longer going to be worked by us. It's going to be worked by them. We caution folks to do this, to, to not do this. The expectation should be contact our office, and then we'll work with the student and work with disability resources to see if we can either move you or find a space that meets your accommodation. But our primary goal is to make sure that we meet the accommodation request based on information given to us by Disability Resources Office. And then the last group of students, and these are the students that applied on or after March 1st. And we do this to manage the expectations of what they're going to be assigned to and who they're going to be assigned with. Historically, March 1st, housing is either closed or students are only being offered what's called a temporary housing offer. We didn't do that this year. Every student that applied for housing has a guaranteed regular room space on campus. What we do is to manage, is manage the expectations of what you ask for and what you get. Uh, but these folks will be assigned based on what they initially asked for or as close as possible in either price point or location. They'll be given a time slot to pick a space like anybody else. But their time slot will be done a little bit later. But again, at some point, everybody's going to be in the same pool and be able to assign themselves wherever they want to. I'm getting lots of information or requests for students that were in this category about their roommates as well. For students that applied on or after March 1st, when they started the application process, there was a big banner at the very beginning of the application process that reminded them and said, hey, because of the time period that you're applying, there is a strong probability that you might not be able to participate in the roommate finder process and or at least the uh, self-select process in the application system. So we did that up front so folks would know, but I'm finding out very quickly they forgot what that meant or didn't realize this is what they meant when they said yes and acknowledge this and understand what this means. But this is what the assignment process is kind of like. And 
And the last group of students is the core cadets. Uh, I know we core will have their own separate meeting, but I do want to let you know that core students will not get a notification from us. So this is the one group of students that will not get a notification from us. They are actually worked by the core cadets. They are really never given their hall and room number until they show up. Core assigns based on my units, and those units are basically de defined by the students when they come, uh, dealing with what military affiliation they were looking at. But again, these students will be worked by the Corps, and they'll get a lot more information when you when you have your uh, admission sessions with the Corps cadets and when you come for your new student conference, because the course kind of works separately. Okay, I'm going to do kind of a real quick pass through our website so that you can find out some information. And this is good information to be looking at now, because you all will be starting the assignment process really starting next week. But if you go to reslife.tmu.edu, it's going to bring you to our homepage. And then really what you're going to start doing is looking at where you're trying to live. So if you're interested in living in the residence halls, you would click on the residence hall tab. If you're interested in living in the university apartments, okay, we have two sets, but you'd be looking at our White Creek apartments. And then we have a tab that's specifically for the core cadets as well. And scrolling on the on the cover page, there's some additional information that talks about dining, parking, and some of our partners. But again, this information is designed really to help filter the information that you're trying to get to, because I think you're going to find out with 50 buildings and 12,000 students and six different price points, our website can look pretty daunting because there's so much information there. But the trick is, is where do you want to live? Who do you want to live with? And what style of property are you trying to get to? And the website will help get you to that information. And we will spend a lot more time at your new student conference on this as well, because you'll need this information as you're preparing for moving. So in your looking for where do you want to live and you're under trying to figure out what the amenities are or what's out of campus or price points or those kinds of issues, what you would do is again, you'd log in, you would click on the housing options kind of below the maroon banner there at the top. And what that's going to do is it's going to bring up the style facilities and then you would specifically click on the building that you're interested in. And again, we will spend a lot of time at your new student conference because I'm going to walk you through kind of that scenario, kind of step by step. But as you're preparing your student to go pick their rooms, this would be good homework information between now and next week to start looking at, to start building your list of here's the places I want to live. So when you get your time slot to go pick your space, you can go directly to that facility and start assigning yourself to that space. And reminders we talked about this is the, you know, the application is for the full academic year and it's the fall and spring semester. And there are penalties for late cancellations. As we talked about, we've already extended the June 1st penalty. So if you are undecided about coming to Texas and you still must accept your new student conference, which is your acceptance of admissions. And then we will give you another month or so uh, to make that final decision whether or not you're coming to ADM. If you decide that you are not coming to AM and you cancel your admissions and then cancel your housing, we will treat that as an on-time cancellation up until June 1st. But if you are coming to AM and have decided to move off campus, then the May 1st deadline is still in effect and late penalties will be enforced. And remember, your students will have been assigned by this point. They will know their assignment and they will know who they're living with. So we're trying to get them as much information as possible to make an informed decision about where they're going to be going to school next year. And we know housing is a big part of that conversation. All right, let's talk about some of the frequently asked questions because I'm getting a whole bunch of these right now. And I think I'll be able to, to probably get 90% of your questions off the top by, by answering these first 10. So when will the student be notified of their assignment? Okay, notice I've got I and then I put the students. Parents, we're going to do the initial notification. So when they send that, that notification starting tomorrow through the weekend, we will send it to the student's TMU email account, their preferred email account, which could be their Gmail or their, their, their Yahoo account or whatever they decided to use. And then for date-specific information, we will send it also to the listed parent slash guardian. So we'll make sure the student is notified. But when the student actually gets their time slots, very specific information about them doing actions, the parents are no longer being notified because it's not your assignment, it's their assignment. And we want them to do that action. But again, all our students should be notified between um, April 10th and April 13th because we will start the assignment cycle. The actual first time slot actually opens up on April 14th. All of our students should be assigned 
before the first of May. So this question deals primarily with roommates and suite mates, and it's really kind of a yes, no question. So can I pick my space for my roommate? Yes. Can I pick my space for my suite mate or flat mates with what they call the other folks that share an apartment? The answer is no on that part. You can only pick one student, I call it Sophie's Choice, pick your friend. And if you are trying to move into an apartment with four students, then what you would do is the first two students would assign themselves, they would message the other two students, let them know exactly what apartment in, and the other two students would go in and assign themselves to the other half of that apartment. So if I did not get what I wanted, what can I do? Well, we have kind of two options. And the first option is not the most palatable, but it is an option. You can cancel your housing. Okay, remember the deadlines and remember whether or not you're coming to AM. That is not my preferred option. The preferred option is continue to look. Think of this again like airline seating. When I got my chance to go pick my space, I really wanted an aisle seat, but I got a window seat. So what happens is like an airline, if the airline has if the plane hasn't left, for us, the plane doesn't leave until the first day of class. You can continue to look all summer long to move yourself to open spaces. And when you come for your new student conference, I'll spend, give some time with you on strategies on how best to do that. But we'll also give you some information as part of your phase four video that talks about how this process works as well. So, if my roommate and I agree to be roommates, how does this work? This is pretty simple if it's called linked bookings. In other words, the two students have gone in in phase three and they said, hey, do you want to be my roommate? Yes, I'm going to be my roommate. And now they are a matched link set. Between the two students, one of them is called the group leader. And it's obvious, it'll be intuitively obvious to the students when they look, who is the group leader in that process? So the two students will have to converse with each other because every student will be, it, will be given a time slot. And the student that is that has the earliest time slot needs to become the group leader. So if your student is the one that is not the group leader and their best friend now has the earlier time slot, the group leader would delegate that responsibility to the other student and the other student would make the assignment for both students. And it works perfectly if the delegation process is done. So again, that's some homework from your students when they get that assignment notification is the two students need to ask each other, when is your time slot and compare time slots. Again, the student with the earliest time slot should be the one that should be the group leader when they go to make that assignment. So if I didn't go through phase three or was unable to participate in phase three roommate selections, what can I do? Well, what you would do is you would go in and you would assign yourself to your space. If you are unable to pick a roommate or you have now subsequently found a roommate, the first student in would go in, pick their space, and then message the other student and tell them this is the room or building or room number that I'm in. And when the other student gets their time slot, they would hopefully go directly to that space to assign them. For the first half of the assignment process, this works perfectly because the buildings aren't full. This becomes an issue towards about the middle of the time slot sequencing because rooms are starting to fill up. The best strategy to do here is for the student that has the earlier time slot to pick a space on an upper floor of the buildings. All of our buildings tend to fill up from the first floor up. So if you want to maximize the probability that nobody else jumps into that open space, then look for an upper space spot and then match yourself and let the other person know so that they can get in to pull them pull themselves up to that assignment location. So I've been assigned as part of the living learning program. Again, there's 18 of those when you count the core of cadets and you've decided now to either change your living learning program, which is a request to move to another location, or you've declined your living learning program. As we talked about earlier, living learning programs are in designated spaces. So you're assigned to that designated space that's associated with that uh, living learning program. If you change your mind, then what happens is, depending on when that change happens, we will get with our academic partners, we will remove you from that living learning program, and then we will assign you to the next available time slot for you to go pick your space. I 
happened. You want a foot stomp on this. That does not mean because you happen to do it today that tomorrow is going to be in your time slot. No, we're looking for a vacancy in our current queue of students to put you back in. And then we will get a bunch of folks that says, hey, I've now come to Texas a or I've now spent some time with the Corps of Cadets and I'm interested in the Corps. Can I do this? The answer is absolutely. Core housing never changes or never closes. So if you are currently living in the residence halls and you've now decided to join the Corps of Cadets, what you would do is you would message me, send me an email, and then I would get with the Corps and I would delete your, your booking on this side and then move you to the Core housing application process. It's really, really easy to go from res life to Core. It's not so easy going from Core. In other words, I've been in the Core, I've decided to do the Core, and for whatever reason I have changed my mind because changing your mind later could be a problem because it'll depend on whether or not housing on this side is still open because we will close housing when we're full. And right now, this is not a problem. It might be a problem here in the next week or two as we fill up because we've got students that are still applying. And so I, I know we're on this. Do I need to accept my admissions offer by May 1st? The answer is yes. You still need to do what you need to make your decisions about the coming text in by May 1st. But what happens is on May 2nd, if you have not accepted your admission offer, then I'm going to get with Mr. Chris Reed and, and the admissions folks, and then we'll find out all the students that didn't formally accept their admission offer, and then we're going to cancel them out of housing. And we do that for a couple of reasons. One, it opens up spaces for other students, but it also keeps those students from getting a, a late cancellation penalty. The right answer should be if you know you're not coming to Texas A&M and you know you have a room assignment, because again, all of our students will have their assignments by this time period. The right answer is you should contact housing directly and cancel your housing. Yeah, the cancellation must be in writing. And it can be done in one of two ways. And the preferred way is to do it through the housing portal and actually do it through that system because it'll automatically date stamp everything that you've done or the backup option is to send us an email with your name and UI and a request to cancel your fall semester house. And then we'll have a group of students that for whatever reason are in the, I've got my time slot, I've got my window, but I have not picked this space. What's going to happen? Well, the right answer should be is you need to pick a space. Even if it's not your preferred space, pick any space and then start moving yourself around. Because what's gonna happen is at some point in time, we're going to cancel out your housing regardless because you didn't pick a space. But the cancellation is going to be based on the date you were given an opportunity to pick a space, not the date that you picked this space. So it's going to be, I got my time to pick my space, say, April 14th. It's now June 1st. I haven't picked my space. And I'm going to go ahead and cancel you effective June 1st. Notice the cancellation cost and penalties to do that because the space hasn't been taken. The reservation is there. You're holding a space somewhere on campus. You're keeping somebody else from picking a space because you're in the queue. So that's why we're pretty adamant. If you're not sure where you want to live, pick someplace and then continue to move yourself around. You have all summer to do that. And can I cancel my housing? And is there a late cancellation charge? Again, we've talked about this. May 1st is the official cancellation deadlines. But we've extended that for, to June 1st for those students that decide between May and June that they are not coming to Texas A&M University for whatever reason. And we know there's a lot of uncertainty going on right now. And in these times, we understand that. But at some point, we need to make some decisions about whether or not I'm going to be attending college at, 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 on the College Station campus. So those are really the kind of the, the spiel that I had this morning. And most of this conversation today is really fielding questions you guys have for me. So I will turn it over to Marissa and company to throw questions at me. All right, so we have a question here. Is what happens if someone in your group has an earlier time slot, but is not the group leader? Can they still choose for both people in the group? How do you delete the other group member to be the leader if they have an earlier time slot? Okay, great question. So what they want to do, again, when next week or this weekend when they all get their time slot, the two students will communicate with each other. So they will now know student A has time slot one, student B has time slot two. So the students at that point, they will be able to go in and look in their roommate profile and it'll tell them who is the group leader. 
the group leader can can basically delegate that to the other person. So if the person that has the later time slot is the group leader, what that person should do is delegate that group leader responsibility to the other student and let the other student with the earlier housing party date do the assignment. If not, when student one goes in, student one won't be able to do both students. They can only do themselves. Student two, the person with the later housing or time slot, would be able to pick for both, but the other student may have already picked their space. This gets to be really challenging if the two students don't define who that group leader is, because if the group leader is defined well up front, the system works really, really well, because it's designed for the one student to pull the other student in. All right, and I think you might have already mentioned this um, as one of the earlier questions is when will we get our time slots? All the time slots should be released between June 10th or June 10th, April 10th and April 13th. Time slots will start opening on April 14th. And we know the vast majority of our students are doing online classes and courses. We have kind of adjusted our times to, to hopefully figure them out that the actual number of time slots is there's a lot more time slots this year, but they're much smaller in, in numbers. So the number in each time slot is smaller. So students really have four or five hours to do something before the next group starts rolling in on top of them. So there's not this Oklahoma land grab that has to be done. And let's say the time slot opens up at 9 a.m. that you've got to be the first one in. Okay, there needs to be some sense of urgency. Don't get me wrong. Um, but if you're logging in at 8.57 and thinking that the moment 9 o'clock happens, you can jump in, the system is going to lock you out. You can't even log in until the beginning of the time slot opening. So if your time slot opens on April 14th at 9 a.m., then you need to start logging in at 14th of April at 9 a.m. All right. If adding, if I added someone to my roommate group, does that mean he's my roommate? If it's considered a linked booking and one of them has been designated the group leader, the answer is yes. There's a difference with, yes, I, I've added someone to be my roommate. Remember, the roommate process has to be kind of negotiated between two students. And usually it's a, hey, do you want to be my roommate? Yes, I want to be my roommate. Then it's accepted. It has to be kind of that back and forth communication offer and accepted by both students for them to be considered a length booking. And if they go to the uh, application status page, they will see, and then on the roommate page, they will see who they are linked with. Should not be a surprise who students are linked in the booking process. When will students in the Honors Housing Learning LLCs learn who their roommates are? Okay, so Honors is done a little bit differently than the other living learning programs. One, Honors does not allow them to pick their room, does not allow them to pick their building, and also does not allow them to pick their roommates. University Honors does all of that for them, and they do that based on groupings or based on students in either similar degree plans or like degree plans. And what will happen is once they get their assignment notification that says, here is your assignment. When they log in, they'll be able to see their roommate if the roommate has listed their profile as being viewable, which means the roommate has marked yes to uh, opting into the roommate profile option. About 95% of our students have done that. There are a group of students that haven't. And when they get their assignment notification, it'll tell them this is what this means if you can't see your roommate. If it shows vacant, which means there's not one assigned, that doesn't mean there won't, won't be assigned. But if it shows vacancy or shows not available, that means that there's someone in there, they have not just given them their information. They basically just didn't click a checkbox. And we'll work with you on the new student conference on how to make sure the two students can communicate together. If we are put in a group with one, with one other person who's going to be in your LLC, does that count as being linked? Yes. What if we did not choose the LLP program, but we choose a specific roommate? Okay. They're, they're, those technically are not necessarily mutually exclusive events. Living, a living learning program just means I'm in a designated space. That's all that means. If you are a linked booking, that means both you and your roommate, neither of you are in a living learning program. And that was part of the reason why phase three was done the way it was done because only living learning programs saw other living learning programs for roommates and non-living learning programs saw everybody else. So by definition, if you have a link booking 
and you're not in an LLP, that means your roommate is not either. You can live anywhere you want that's available to you that has two open spaces for you to pick and put to assign yourself to. All right. How are timing slots assigned? That is probably the hardest question that I get, but it's really the easiest to answer. All housing assignments are done based on the student's housing priority date, which is the date they applied for housing. It has nothing to do with their admissions offer. It has everything to do about when they applied for housing. So I got accepted to Texas State University on September 19th, but I waited until January 1st to apply for housing. January 1st is gonna be the date time group that we're gonna use. And I will tell you folks, for the first three to 4,000 students that apply for housing, the date time group is day, hour, minute, and seconds. And we try to do the time slot so there's an even divide between days. So if, if time slot one is, let's say it's 300 people, then hopefully all 300 people have a date that's when time slot two opens up, it's another day. So there's a separation by at least one business day between the first group and the second group. Next question is, if we missed the April 6th deadline to choose a roommate, would we still be able to coordinate roommate or room selection? The answer is yes. And when they get their assignment notification uh, this week, there'll be some information that says, here's how this works. What they need to do is the two students will still go on and have a communication between them that says, when is your time slot and compare it with the other. The student with the earlier priority or time slot, so the earlier housing priority date, would go ahead and pick a room with two empty spaces, preferably on an upper floor. They would message the student and tell them, I am specifically in, done, 322. So when the other student gets their time slot to go in and pick their space, they would go directly to that room and hope they can get into that open space. Again, it works really well for about the first few time slots. In other words, the first half of the time slots, it gets to be a little bit problematic towards the end because they're finding a completely empty room is gonna be a challenge. The alternative plan at that point would be for the student that has not been assigned is to go ahead and assign themselves to the same building that the other student is in because then it's a whole lot easier to work a roommate swap if they're in the same building and same style of building. And we'll work several thousand of those over the summer. So first I wanna clarify that our deadline to confirm with admissions is May 1st. Um, but the question here is what happens if a student decides they do not want to come to A&M or live on campus after June 1st? Well, then the cancellation penalties apply. It's a $1,000 cancellation penalty after June 1st. Housing contract is pretty well defined on this. Remember, our students are not required to live on campus. We do not charge a deposit up front, and we hold that space for them because they are guaranteed a space on campus. So the, the queue is full while they're still in the queue. So we, we have a graduating cancellation penalties. May 1st to June 1st is, uh, is technically $500. June 1st and later is $1,000, and then after August 15th, it gets to be really expensive because now you've held a space, you've kept somebody else from living on campus. Thank you, Jeff. Um, next is, if we applied at different times, one in December and one in February, early March, will we both get priority time slots for choosing our dorm? Well, priority time slots is a bit of a misnomer. Every student will get a time slot. I'd like to think that all the time slots are a priority. They are guaranteed a space on campus when they apply for housing. So both will have a place to live on campus. It gets to be a bit more challenging as to what space that'll be because it's again, uh, it fills up first come first serve based on when they apply for housing. So using those timelines that you just gave me, the February person will be worked first. The March person will be worked, worked next or worked later. How many students are between the two is what makes this a bit of a challenge because those students are in picking spaces too. So they'll both get a place to live on campus. It's whether or not they both get a place to live on campus together initially is going to be the challenge. And that is relatively late in the time sequence. And that's why any student that applied for housing on or after March 1st was told up front, hey, you may not get a chance to do the self-select process and you may not get a chance to participate in the roommate finder process because you're relatively late in the process. 
remember, we started in September, and we'll have, when it's all said and done, we'll have about 10,000 students that will apply for housing. Some will both cancel. So we traditionally close housing when we're full, and we our maximum occupancy is all of our normal beds, and then we have some over spaces that we use, which is our traditional melt. So those students that tend, tend not to come between June and August, we, we move those, those folks up. And we'll spend a lot of time at your new student conference kind of talking about that. Right now, nobody's in that situation. But that doesn't mean they won't be later. How do you and your roommate switch being room leaders if one has an earlier time slot? The two students need to negotiate that between themselves. The group leader needs to delegate to the other student. If the other student has the earlier time slot to go pick a room. What happens if your roommate decides not to attend A&M? Well, that is a bit of a problem. Um, and Here's where this gets to be a bit of an issue for us, because when they cancel, it doesn't, there's not like an automatic notification that goes to the roommate that says, hey, I just canceled. Have a good life. Hope you enjoy where you're living next year. There is no communication done through the portal from when the student cancels to the roommate. I do not like to be the bearer of bad news when the student says, but I, why wasn't I assigned with my roommate? My job is going to tell them, well, you probably need to have a conversation with your roommate because the hard part is it's, like, it's telling them they've canceled without telling them they've canceled. And that happens a lot. You know, it'll happen really, really frequently here between, uh, say, the middle of April and about the 1st of May. So there's a bunch of students that, are, that have applied to multiple schools for whatever reason, and they've decided to go somewhere else. It's really behooving to the students to have this communication. It really is their responsibility to have that, that discussion, not my job to tell them. Your roommate canceled. How long are time slots? I'm sorry? How long are time slots? So time slots are open-ended. So what happens is you can't do anything before your time slot opens. So if your time slot opens on, say, April 14th at 9 a.m., it will not close until just before we open for the, for, the, for the academic year, so in August. So you'll have an opportunity to look as much as you want or, or as frequently as you want from the moment your time slot opens until basically the first week of August. Are there specific parking for each residence hall? When your student shows up for their new student conference, uh, myself and parking actually share the new student conference presentation. But yes, each of our facilities has designated parking that's associated with that side of campus. And north side of campus has uh, lots that are associated with them. South side of campus has lots that are associated with them. And then White Creek has a lot that's specific for them. On-campus residents are given priority in those lots and again, transportation services will spend a little bit of time with you this summer because I believe it's about the first week of July is when you actually have to register your parking. Your parking does not have to be done the day that you get your filing. You have some time to work through that. And then when is move-in day and how much is it to sign up for early move-in? We're gonna spend some time at your new student conference talking about that. I believe move-in and I don't have my calendar in front of me, I apologize. It's August 12th, but let me double check. Falls open on August 16th at 8 o'clock in the morning. When you show up for your new student conference, we will talk about how to do early move-in. There is an early move-in option that's going to be available. You can't apply for early move-in until you have finalized your housing or at least been given a space to live on campus. Uh, it, early moving is not a first come first serve, so it does not have to be done the first day. In fact, the early moving link is not even open until June. But when you uh, attend your new student conference, there'll be a specific instructions on how uh, early moving works. But for the residence life students, we traditionally let students come in that Friday night and that Saturday. There's an additional charge of fifty dollars per night per student to do that, and there's an application process to, for that to work. Um, when will we know if we've been accepted into the LLC we applied for? Well, I'm hoping they already know because my understanding is all the living learning programs have done their assignments, or have done their, uh, uh, their approval process. There should have been a final confirmation done, I believe, on March 30th that was done by our academic support office. They notified every student that says you are in this program. Uh, copies of all of their housing-related correspondence to include their living learning program designations 
can be found on their housing portal. So parents, if you're writing something down, this would be something that you want to make sure your students are looking at. But if they go to their oncampusaggies.tmu.edu, log in with their net ID, and then they would click on the three little hash marks next to their name on the top left-hand side. It will show every communication that we have sent to the students. Uh, so copies of all the communication can be found there. Uh, and it's a great resource to go look at that information and parents help your students get there because that is where the information is going to be stored. Again, when it's really important information or very time sensitive, we're going to send the student an email to both their TMU email account, their preferred email account, and when we really want to get their attention, we'll make sure we add the listed parent or guardian. We'll also be sending text messaging throughout the summer, letting folks know there's information for them to go do. That text messaging goes to the student only. But again, copies of those text messages can also be found on their correspondence folder in their housing uh, application. Right now I have one other person in my group. Does this mean they're my roommate? You can only have one person in a group, or two people total, the person and the roommate. So if those are linked bookings, one of them should be designated as the group leader. So the answer would be yes, if that has happened. Are there any appliances included in the different room styles? If not, are we allowed to bring our own? We'll spend some time at your new student conference talking about what to bring and what not to bring, because it really depends on where your student is living. But our students are allowed to have up to a 4.4 cubic foot refrigerator and one microwave, one 700 watt microwave. If you elect to uh, use the uh, uh, micro chills, which is a third party vendor that basically you can rent from, which is a combination of refrigerator and microwave, then each student can have one of those. If I haven't started my application process, is it too late? Right now, housing is open, and I started the presentation letting folks know that it is still an option. Uh, they're going to be work kind of last in the system because they're basically last in the process. But if they apply for housing, they are guaranteed a space on campus. It's what that guarantee becomes. In other words, I really want to live in Hoblu. That might be too hard to do, but I guarantee that they will have a space on campus. Um, I'm not sure if I'm in an LLC or not, but if I was and my housing preference doesn't include the LLC dorm, will I be put in the LLC or in my preference? The priority becomes if you're in a living learning program, what you requested as part of your preferences is null and void. You're going to be assigned to this space associated with that living learning program. I want to spend a little bit of time talking about the preferences that the student listed. Those preferences are not used by us unless I have to physically assign them. My goal is not to assign any students that applied before the 1st of March. All of those students should either be assigned based on their living learning program or given a time slot and they can pick any space that's available to them when they do that. We are not looking at those preferences other than if I have to physically do the assignment. And I'm only using those preferences to make sure that I meet, that meet their price point uh, because it's a requested hell blue and I will try to give an Hello Blue or something as close as priced to Hello Blue as possible. If you requested a Hart or Walton Hall, which is our lowest cost price facilities, then my goal is to get them in Hart or Walton or the next available price point as close as possible to what they asked for. All right, so we're getting a lot of questions about the washers and dryers. So are we only allowed to use the ones that are in our dorm or can we use ones like in Hello Blue Hall if we don't reside there? <laughs> well, the short answer is you can only use the ones that are associated with your facilities. Now, that being said, all of our facilities have washers and dryers in them. Or, have, or if they're a clustered facilities, they have them associated. There's multiple washers and dryers associated with their facilities. So if you are living in, say, Hart Hall, um, you have a washer and dryer facility in Hart Hall. Could you do your laundry in, in Hullabin? Only if someone lets you in to do it because it requires card swipe to get into that facility. Your card access only allows you into the facility for which you were assigned to. So the only way you can get in those other facilities is to be a guest by somebody else in that facility. So could you do it? Yes. Should you be doing it? The answer is no. And by the way, the example I just gave, that's about 
400 yards between one facility and the other. That's a long way to be hauling your laundry. We are getting some questions about the core. Just wanted to um, send this out that we will be having a live Q and A with the core on April 14th. Um, you can find those links again on our admissions website. Um, an additional question for housing is how are boys and girls split up? Uh, really easy. They're split up by gender. We do not allow students of the opposite gender to share a bedroom or a bathroom on this campus. So we do have a bunch of facilities that are called co-ed, and those facilities may be co-ed by floor, which means only men live on one floor and women live on the other floor, or co-ed by room, which means men would live in one room, women would live in the next room, but they would not share that bathroom. If they're co-ed by suite, then all four students of the same gender would share that suite because of that shared bathroom. If we cannot get into the LLC dorm we want, can we try to select another dorm building we like? That question's kind of misdirected because the LLC, with the exception of honors and engineering, are designated specific buildings. Everybody else has only got a floor or part of a building. So I will use the example of, say, um, faction. Faction is one of our living learning programs that lives in Hart, or, uh, Walton Hall. So it's not all of Walton, it's part of Walton. So if I'm part of Faction, I'm going to be assigned to this space that is associated with Faction in Walton Hall. If I'm not part of any living learning program, I could pick Walton Hall still because there's space available for other students to live in that facility as well. So again, living learning programs are assigned to designated spaces associated with that living learning program. Honors and engineering are two of our bigger ones. All of the university honor students will live in Lecter McFadden, and all of the engineering students will live in the Commons in Mosier, Dunn, and Kruger. All right, is honors, engineering honors housing is an option, correct? Engineering honors is called ECOS, and yes, it is an, an option under the living learning program under the engineering pull tab. If I'm planning to live on in White Creek with three other girls, how would roommate selection work? The best way to do that is two students need to be designated group leaders for, for half of the group. So the, what the four students would probably need to do, all of them will get their time slot this weekend. Those four students would communicate with each other. And between the four of them, the two students with the two earliest housing priority dates or the two earliest time slots would now designate one of the roommates theirs and designate the other roommate theirs, and then the two group leaders would go pick their space. The first one in would pick a completely empty four bedroom apartment, preferably on an upper floor, and then message the other two, and the other two students, when they get their time slot, would go directly to that apartment and assign themselves to that space. That works really, really well at White Creek. We tried it last year, it worked very well. It becomes problematic when the students have all applied relatively late in the process, defined late, probably January to February is when it becomes a problematic because we got a whole bunch of students that are going in solo. And then once, once one person assigns himself to that apartment, it makes the other four spaces challenging because there's not four spaces left. There's only three spaces left. And that's where this gets to be a bit of a challenge. It's about the halfway point for us, uh, specifically at White Creek. It becomes a, a problem a little sooner at White Creek. Uh, after the group leader has picked the room for them and their roommate, if the group leader drops out of on-campus housing, does the other roommate get to keep the room? The answer is yes. And I'll tell you, it's kind of a yes with a caveat. There's nobody bumping them out. The student will still have to go in and accept their offer. Every student will have their time slot. So group leader goes in and pulls group to student in there. The other student still has their time slot. They can go in there and basically confirm their space or they can move their space. And if the group leader has left, um, then they can move themselves wherever they want to because they're not tied to a specific roommate when that happens. Again, when they get their assignment notification, there's gonna be some information about that. Uh, it gets kind of complicated when, when it starts to, when students start to leave 
and it depends on when they leave and what other students are still getting in the system. If the students are leaving as we're doing time slots, it's relatively easy to work. It becomes a little bit problematic when students pick themselves, say, April 14th, they've both been assigned, and the other student decides to leave, say, June or July. And what happens is that the, the, the space that the student left is just vacant. Now, any student can pick that space. And what happens is someone does, and the student finds out when they go to go look at their roommate, they go, I've got a new roommate, what just happened? What just happened is one of two things. The roommate decided to leave, or the roommate decided to, to not come down now. Sounds like neither neither case where the roommate told the other roommate that that's what happens. And then unfortunately, that does happen. But the student that has been pulled into the room will get to keep the space because that's what the link bookings mean. Well, thank you, Jeff, so much for taking some time to answer all of these questions for us. Um, if anybody has any questions, Jeff's contact information is on the screen, so please feel free to reach out to housing um, so they can answer anything else. Um, additionally, we are giving out two scholarships for this, so for everyone, please keep an eye out on your email. We will be sending out an email later today announcing those. But thank you so much, everyone. Have a good day. Thanks, y'all. Welcome to